Hi there, hello and welcome to Nielsen Smart Solutions. So in this video, we're going to look at how we may be able to use our understanding of the composite functions to solve exams questions. If you haven't yet watched the video on composite functions, I will encourage you to please look and watch that video because that will really help you understand how we're going to use that to solve these exams questions. Stay tuned. I will also advise you, if you can, just pause the video, have a go at the questions, and then see if you're actually in line with what we did. Thank you, and stay tuned. So today we're gonna to be watching and looking at how we could solve exams questions on composite functions. Okay, so composite functions, we've done that. If you've not yet watched the video, um, I will encourage you to watch the video. So this is um, where we use that video to help us answer these exams questions. So the first part says we've been given the function f to be 2x minus 4 and the function g to be 3x at 5. And by all means, feel free to pause the video and have a go at the questions yourself before looking at the solutions. Okay, so we are to work out uh, the function g of f of 3. Okay, so we know that the function f is 2x minus 4. The function g is 3x at 5 so that means the function g f3 we're going to sub 3 into f and then our answer into g so we're going to have the g out waiting after we break this out when we go to f it says 2x 2x with substitution means 2 times by 3 okay watch my video on substitution if you're not sure so we're going to multiply 2 by 3 then take away 4 so 2 times by 3 take away 4 and always remember to use bit mass okay so we've got the g outside until we've worked a bit in the bracket out 2 times 3 is 6 take away 4 is 2 so now this 2 is for g so when we go to g where x is we're going to replace x with 2 so we are going to substitute x equals 2 into the function g okay so that's the function g we're gonna substitute x equals 2 into so with that gives us 3 times by 2 add 5 use bit mass always 3 times 2 we know is 6 add 5 6 add 5 is 11 so our answer to this first question is 11 and that's pretty much it okay now we we'll also be looking at the next one. So the next one here, we are told that of course, the function f is 3x plus one, and the function g is x squared. So if you want f g x, so we're gonna try and make sure we get our part coming. Okay, so we've got our, the function f again here this time to be, 3x at 1 and then we've got g to be x squared so to work out f g x simply means we start with our g our g is x squared now this x squared is in bracket in front of f so that means we are being referred to the function f wherever we see x we replace it with x squared and what happened to this x was it was being multiplied by 3 then add 1 so our x is now x squared so we multiply x squared by 3 then add 1 so that gives me 3x squared add 1 and that gives me the function g f of g of x okay if i want to work out the function of g of f of x which is the second part of that question so i'm gonna screw up Let's say I know that I'll start with G and then so let's write the question down so G and then I replace in bracket the function F which is 3x at 1 okay the function G says whatever is in the bracket just square it whatever is in the bracket we're gonna square it and we've got 3x at 1 in the bracket we just square it we don't need to do anything with that we just leave it and that's our answer the last part involves a lot of tricky work and of course if you are really weak at solving and expanding brackets and solving quadratic equations you might want to watch out for my video on those topics 
to help you otherwise feel free to watch this and take your time and hopefully you will understand i'll take my time with that so we're looking at the c part we are to solve the function f g x equals g f x so simply connotes the idea of rearranging and solving to get an answer for an unknown that's what solving suggests so let's go back to our working up we know the function f g x is 3 x add 1 so we'll put it there so that is 3 x add 1 and then we we'll know the answer for our g f x is 3 x add 1 all squared so these are two different things okay so that's 3 x squared add 1 I beg your pardon and 3 x add 1 all squared okay so what we're gonna try and do here is to be able to solve quadratic equations is always good how do i know this is quadratic equations is because it has got squared in it so it's good to expand the bracket so we're gonna try and expand the bracket okay so we're gonna expand this bracket something squared simply means multiply by itself so we're gonna just work on our 3x add 1 okay so make sure, let me make sure we can see it properly okay so i know it's 3x squared means 3x times 3 uh, 3x add 1 times 3x add 1 so i'm going to expand the bracket and that gives me 9x squared so i'm multiplying 3x by 3x then 3x by 1 gives me 3x then y by 3x will give me 3x and then 1 times by 1 is 1 this is what many of you for the foil method watch out for my video and expanding brackets to help you understand this so this will give me 9x squared add 6x add 1 so that's more add one which is the first part of my equation and then against 9x squared plus 6x plus 1 this becomes quadratic now when we solve quadratic equation we want to make sure we move everything to one side so that there is an, a zero on the other side okay so if we minus 3x squared from both sides we minus 3x squared from both sides of our equal sign we should have 1 here equals 6x squared at 6x at 1. We're going to minus 1 from both sides. So we're going to get 0 on one side. So that gives us 0 equals 6x squared at 6x. What this actually means is the same as saying we've got 6x squared add 6x equal to 0. If you have no clue what we're doing here and you are really stuck and you've confused, I will encourage you to watch my video on solving quadratic equations, solving equations and keep practicing that because that will help you. Now in solving this, this is actually straightforward. We have so many ways of doing this. First of all, we can see 6 is common. We could divide through by 6 to get rid of the 6x or we could just factorize 6x out. So what do I multiply by 6x to get 6x squared? It's just x. What do I multiply by 6x to get 6x? It's just 1. Okay? Because 1 times any non-zero term is the number itself. And that equals 0. What that means is we've got 6x equal to 0. Or x add 1 equal to 0. Okay? So when 6x equal to 0, divide both sides by 6 and x is 0. Or when x add 1 equal to 0, minus 1 from both sides and x is minus 1. So in solving, we've been able to determine that x is either equal to 0 or x is equal to minus 1. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hi, I really do hope that you learned something from what you watched today. My hope is that now when a question comes on composite functions in your exams, you are going to do well because I believe in you, yeah. Let's go and smash this match. Thank you. Remember to also subscribe, like, and share our video. And remember, 
you can also subscribe to get more access to deeper understanding of maths on our website at nissinsmathsolutions.co.uk.